it's Jenna and Matt from HDYO. We're excited to be able to provide a little bit of an update for you. Um, so, hey, Matt, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Feeling pretty good. That's awesome. I love your, oh, show everybody your picture in the background of you receiving your designation. My, my medal. Your medal, your medal of honor. Yeah. What's more important to me? Than medals. <laughs> medal, medal or family. <laughs> Difficult. No, what we wanted to do is that we wanted to just chat a little bit about what's been happening in HDYO. It's been a really instrumental and pivotal year as mm -hmm. everybody has really been rebounding post pandemic and HDYO has making tremendous strides as we one celebrated our 10th year last year and are looking ahead to the next five years with initiating some new and revamping some um, previous programs in order to support, educate, and empower young people and families impacted by HD across the world. So first of all, one of the biggest things we did this year was Congress. That was such a tremendous environment to bring young people from across the world together in Scotland. Um, really the first time that we've done this in person uh, for young adults and, um, and just be together in a space where everybody understood what HD was. Matt, what you were there, what did you experience? Well, it was it was uh, monumental for for you know kind of our youth community. Let's say our young adult community. We've done. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about camp later, but we've done uh, youth camps in the past. For usually that's for like um, you know like up to the age of about 23, like Dean onwards to 23. Um, and we wanted to try to do something for the older group that we also represent, you know, because officially we go up to 35. So, and when people saw that we were doing the camps and, you know, how kind of, how strong the feedback was from the camps, uh, people wanted that for their age range. So we we decided to, to set up Congress and, and uh, unfortunately, COVID hit us and we had it set up for 2020 and then COVID came crashing in, which was lovely. Um, but we we persisted and uh, and here we are in 2023 and uh, yeah, we had it and it was a huge success. Um, and well done, Jenna, for organising most of it. <laughs> um, it was really a fantastic experience uh, to be a part of and just to to have so many people, young young adults from the community, just from so many different countries represented was was beautiful to see and is is what HGO is about in that regard. Well, and I think what was what was breathtaking from it is how people, I think everybody exhaled because of having been so separated and this was many people's first time to ever leave their country, their first HD event. So if you can imagine traveling across different countries for your first HD event to, to maybe be the first place where you didn't have to feel scared to talk about it. Um, and, and then you add in the pandemic on top of it and there were just lifelong friendships formed. And it also offered a great opportunity for our ambassadors, which we'll chat a little bit about um, later, to have an instrumental role in the success of this event. This was really designed by the community for the community in a way that was impactful, allowed them to share the topics that they were most interested in. And it was a great first year and we're gonna continue to build off of it even further to make sure that we um, are representing the needs, but also having those marquee programs that make HDYO um, so successful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the, all the speakers were, were fantastic from, from, well, the professional side, but also the young people's side, the young adult side. They were absolutely phenomenal um, and really uh, very courageously just shared their experiences of each topics and uh, it really um, I was really really impressed by how how well people spoke um, about those topics and uh, and just then the support was there instantly because everybody understands you know so it was just a beautiful environment and it's again that's the environment that we 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 love to kind of facilitate and try and make happen as much as we can and um, so yeah we've 
it was a, a great success. Yeah, I agree. And it was fun too. I think that's what there's Sometimes a lot of it was. topics. Yeah. Sometimes no, but, it was. Well, I think that there was a mix of fun things to do on top of some of those heavier topics. And yeah. so it and it allowed for people to take a break. And we had mental health professionals there to talk through some of those challenging times. We had um scholarships. So we alone at HDYO mm -hmm. were able to give away a hundred scholarships to help support that's travel. Fantastic. And then we saw so many partnering organizations and associations invest in sending their people to Congress as well. And we yeah. had a tremendous amount of sponsors. And that's really what it is, because it's expensive to travel across the world. Yeah. Um, and but the the fact that there were so many people invested in making this event successful and allowing as many people to attend as possible was was great to see. And we had about 340 yeah. participants, which was tremendous, which was amazing for the first year and we'll just yeah a roaring there. success yeah for sure yeah I mean that's what's that's what's most beautiful for me is just when you see people who well you've seen people for the first time that's that's nice as well but it's also just that kind of thing oh, oh this person these people are from this family's from Australia and they've come all this way and that wouldn't have happened if if you know we didn't help facilitate that and uh, do the scholarships and all those kind of things to help people get there and things like that yeah same thing for all those people coming from just some really random places like you know we have the late the young person from Egypt and other places like that and it's really Oman beautiful and yeah. yeah when you see people like that it's really just beautiful really makes you feel like yeah this is this is what we want to do <laughs> Yeah. It was it was fantastic. I think we had something. Uh, I'm not even going to say the number. I have it in the notes, but I'll post it in the comments. But then dozens of countries represented, which we couldn't have done that without our partners and without our individual donors. And I think that that's something too to keep in mind is that those individual donors play a huge part. We have people who fundraise in order to build up our scholarship funds for our specific mm -hmm. program. And yep. we use those, we save that and use them directly to help support young people to attend these programs. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got exciting news that we are actively planning our Congress to be held in March of 2025. Uh, details yet to come. We are going to be doing it every other year um, currently. So we did it in 2023. We'll be doing it again in 2025. So stay tuned for those details. If you didn't get a chance to participate, we do have all of our sessions available on our YouTube channel. So you can still hear those stories repeat if you were able to visit them or if you didn't if you weren't able to attend because you weren't at congress or you had multiple sessions happening at the same time and want to look back it's all available to you at our hdyo youtube channel which now if you didn't know youtube is using handles just like other social media so it's at hdyo feed so that's congress so thanks so much for all of the support that we've gotten over that but that's not just what H2IO has been working on this past year. We've is been, um, yeah, I know. I, I would <laughs> look like younger. It, you, but... I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, some of the programs that we're looking at um, that we've been thinking about and working on has been our breaking down barriers pieces. This got started in 2021 as the idea of breaking down the different barriers and stigmas around research specifically, but we also realized quickly that we needed to break down the barriers of so many other pieces of people impacted by Huntington's disease because we know that there are cultural stigmas, stigmas around access, stigmas around social aspects of it on top of that research component. Um, so we've done different pieces, like um, we had a, an animated video about an insight into clinical trials and drug development. We followed two young people as they participated in Enroll HD, and we also followed a young person as they um, did a behind the scenes lab tour. So we've done those in previous years. Matt, we just released this summer um, another animated piece. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah so we did a, a, a nice uh, whiteboard video on talking to children about Huntington's. Um, so we have a lot of content for, for parents and guardians on the site uh, about that topic, which is, you know, the main, the, the a very important topic to have advice on and, 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 you know, probably a bit underserved overall. So yeah, we, we, we wanted to do um, a video to kind of bring all of that content together and just cram it into something where people can just watch it for a few minutes. So that's what we've done. That's good to go up live now on youtube and uh and looking good worth a watch 
And we're in the process of translating it into multiple languages. Um, mm -hmm. So if you, we're starting with um, Spanish and Portuguese because there's a div big demand for those languages. But if you work for a local association and you would like us to work with you on getting them translated, please contact Matt or I, uh, because we'd love to be able to spread this message in different languages because we have a, a, a strong belief in the importance of including young people as early as possible in order for them to be empowered um, by being impact while being impacted by Huntington's disease. What else do you yeah. have working on um, for this, this next series? We're working on a uh, research uh, topic one, so one on accessing HD research at the moment, and that's almost there. So it's basically about um, different ways people can access research, you know, young people, young adults, um, through clinical trials, through um, observational studies like Enroll, and uh, things like surveys, things like Join HD, which we've got going on at HDO um, for the juvenile community. So just kind of highlighting the different formats that people can participate in and then specific to HD and specific to maybe what's in your location, giving you some advice of where to go to find out where, where you, what you can participate in. I think that's such a, an important hmm. thing because there, for young people, there aren't going to be a lot of clinical trials out there based off of yeah. the fact that they're looking for different disease progression. Yeah. But there are so many ways to still be involved yeah. with research. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what HGYO is doing in that field. But this is a really important piece because even understanding where to start now, if you're impacted, you can help support a loved one or a friend to make some decisions about if participating in research is, is the right decision for them or a loved one or yourself um, in the future. So this is gonna be a really tremendous piece. Yeah. Um, on top of those produced pieces, we're also doing a series of different casual conversations as a part of this Breaking Down Barriers program. Um, we've done a piece about understanding what observational studies are because there are a lot of uh, misconceptions about who can participate um, and the, the, the really big importance that they play in understanding biomarkers and understanding how, um, how our bodies work when impacted by Huntington's disease and, and things to that nature. So it's really important to participate in those. Um, but we've also talked with um, some professionals and uh, community members about some of the stigmas around lumbar punctures. We know that that's not a very fun procedure to go through, but there's a lot of fear associated with that. But many clinical trials, that's a part of it. And so we want to be able to squash some of those fears. So then that way you can make a good decision of participating and that clinical trial is right for you without having that fear. We've also been hosting some conversations with pharmaceutical companies to understand the science behind the trial, because we want you all to be able to um, not be intimidated and to be able to, again, make that choice that's right for you. Um, and then we've also had um, a, a conversation that's gonna be premiering soon um, about the stigmas around grief and loss, because we want people to understand that um, how to take care of themselves and what that journey could look like when impacted um, to the many different stages of grief and loss while being impacted by Huntington's disease. And so I think that these programs, um, I know these programs are gonna continue to evolve um, for a variety of different topics because we want everybody to feel like they're a part of the community and that they don't have to be beheld by these stigmas or fears um, associated with some of these different areas around Huntington's disease. Our other virtual program that we've been doing is our HDU community stories. So these are community stories that are told by the community and for the community. And it's really about talking about people's experiences. So we've had um, Charlotte shared about her experiences um, through a video diary of, of deciding to go through genetic testing and ultimately mm. um, her, her journey with testing positive. We've had a series of interactive conversations with some of our ambassadors who have gone through the genetic testing process and tested negative. Some who have decided not to test. We're gonna be looking at what some of the partner experiences are like in different avenues as well. And so if you have a story that you're interested in sharing, please reach out to us because really, again, we just wanna make this community that can sometimes feel isolating become closer together through these shared experiences so no one has to journey alone. 
Um, we also have our mentorship program, which right now is only offered in the United States with hopes of expanding that. But essentially, it's a partnership with the Huntington's Disease Society of America that's taking um, a, a program that was successful at the Huntington Society of Canada and um, developing it where we can pair and train young people impacted by HD as mentors or leaders and pair them with a mentee who doesn't necessarily have to be younger in the community, but someone who's newer to the community or having a hard time. And then we pair that make those pairs based off of like circumstances or experiences with Huntington's disease. So then that way they have a peer-to-peer -peer support system. And those mentors and mentees are also matched with an HDSA social worker. So as they go through, if they need a little bit of extra help, not only do they have the coordinators of this program, but they also have that social worker to help make sure that they're staying attuned to their mental health needs um, and can serve as another layer of resources when and if needed. So that's a fantastic program as well that we continue to recruit um, so find out more on our website um, or visiting the NYA page as well from the HDSA. One of, um, one of my favorite programs we have is our ambassador program. We have now over 80 ambassadors from over a dozen different countries who these are young people who at the base level just want to be there to support themselves and each other. And um, they are there to provide that peer-to-peer -peer support. They also help with different programs like serving on panels or developing our educational programs to bring their perspective. Um, they help us with different marketing efforts and sharing their story throughout the month of May, which is HD Awareness Month, and so much more. Our top tips, Matt, you're a part of this group too. What have you seen as we've gone through year one into year two this year? Yeah, again, it's a lot of, it's a very cool group to be a part of. Um, always something going on, uh, always something to take part in, always something to get engaged with. And, and again, people in that group are very kind of uh, respectful and uh, kind of insightful about their experiences as well and, and happy to share and really just, uh, yeah, uh, share with, uh, share their experiences really, really well. I think one of the, one of the first kind of hurdles that I've seen people and, and the reason this program has been so successful is that sometimes people are, are in a part of their journey where they don't want to share outwardly. They don't want to share their story on social media or even past their family or even to their family, but they want to connect with other people in the community. And yeah. that, again, is kind of the base level of the ambassadors. So we have people who are ambassadors who um, are just active on our WhatsApp chat, ask questions to each other. Um, we have people who uh, choose not to participate at all, but they follow along because they want to be included. You have people who do everything. And then because life is happening, they may take a step back and then come back. And, and this program is really designed because we want to um, we want this to ebb and flow and be a, a, an, um, an advantage and advantageous relationship and opportunity for our ambassadors without feeling burdensome. So we're there to support one another and um, we allow the ambassadors to tell us how and when they want to get further involved and what that looks like to them. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else to add. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to chat a little bit about is some of our research initiatives. Um, one is an educational program called a research video series. This takes the HD Buzz articles and it breaks them down into two to three minute long vignettes to be able to provide some high level information about what that article is about from the latest in research with the hopes that I know my attention span is little, um, Matt's is even worse. And as we all go through our attention spans, Very sometimes aren't there, <laughs> aren't there to, to read the whole article. So we want to provide um, a little snapshot of what's, uh, what's going on in that article posted on social media in order for young people to be able to see it with the hopes that once you see it, you'll become intrigued and go back and read the HD Buzz article. But that's been happening now since 2021. And we continue to do that. Um, almost on a monthly scale, sometimes more frequent, sometimes less. It just depends on when those articles are published. Yeah, that's a favorite of mine. It's a really great program. Yeah, it's good. Um, we also have um, two 
research initiatives that we are spearheading as well. Our research committee has been working and we launched this in April, our series of different surveys. And these surveys are based off of what we wanna know from the community of young people globally. It's a big deal to get a global survey that is approved through ethics and the IRBs um, associated because there are many different regulations to go across country lines and we found a way to do it. And this is one of those ways that, again, we know that access to research can be a challenge, whether it's because you don't fit in within those demographics of a clinical trial, or you live in a country where you don't have the ability to participate in anything because of lack of access. So these surveys are a way that you can participate. Our first one launched in April, as I mentioned, and it's all about how and what resources you find are important and where you go to seek those resources. And it's for anybody 18 and older impacted by HD. That includes people who um, have a parent who's had Huntington's disease, if they know their genetic status or don't, if they're a friend, if they're a family member, if they are a professional, if they're someone in an association, whatever it is, you are all impacted and influenced by Huntington's disease. And we want to understand your journey. So what are we gonna do with these? We're gonna take the results and we're gonna publish them through posters, through presentations, in order to help all of the advocacy and medical community to be able to provide interventional support and interventional education for the community. So it's not something that HDYO is just gonna sit on and say, oh, thanks for the information, it's only gonna help us. We're doing it for the betterment of the entire community. So please stay tuned and participate in those different research surveys. Our next ones are going to have to do with some of the barriers around um, participating in clinical trials. We're also going to be uh, doing um, a series of surveys that's going to map your HD journey with what was happening in those major life milestones. So we can use those tools to help educate um, the advocacy community on how to provide tailored support for young people. There's a lot of information about once someone is symptomatic and how to navigate things like disability, long-term care, these pieces of it, but not a lot that really understands the young person's journey and how those HD milestones plays into a big impact of those life milestones and vice versa. So we wanna be able to utilize these tools to again, help provide interventional care. So um, do it complete it. And if you're interested to help us with translations, let us know. We want to make sure that this is translated in as many languages as possible to be able to get that true global um, perspective. Whew, this is a lot of stuff we got going on. Um, our, next, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> our next research initiative that we've been working on for a few years now is called the Juvenile Onset Initiative for Huntington's Disease, which is called Join HD. This is an international, again, international registry for caregivers, current and past, people who have been diagnosed with juvenile onset HD, current and past, to share their perspectives. The hope is to one, find and locate families impacted with this extremely rare disease and rare form of Huntington's disease all across the world. Two, to be able to understand the journeys and unmet needs of this community, and three, utilize this information to encourage future research efforts in JOHD. We have a, a pre-enrollment form that you submit your information to. We host one meeting with you in order to make sure that one, you are impacted by JOHD, and then two, you understand the processes and have all of your questions answered. And then you have a login, you go in and you complete a couple of questionnaires from the comfort of your own phone, from your own home. You can do it by your phone, you can do it through a computer, whatever that looks like, and then you're done. It's pretty easy. And we do it in a way in order that it's not an extra burden for these families impacted by JOHD, because we know that there's not a lot of extra time because of, especially if you're activate, actively caring for someone with JOHD. Yeah. Um, and we're in the process of launching to um, stage two, which is going to include family and medical history. And then, um, again, we'll be utilizing this information um, in order to, to um, help provide some support services, understanding those unmet needs, and then encouraging future research. Matt, you've seen this program from the inception. What are your thoughts as you've seen it develop? It's important. There's, no, there's really not, not, nothing really like it for juvenile HD. Um, around at the moment. 
um, that you can engage in and kind of, you know, participate in to some degree. So it's really a needed part of the HG community. And also it's kind of, you know, it's an area which is a bit unmet um, for, for one reason or another. Um, it's been that way for a long time. So juvenile hutchins deserves more attention and we're, we're glad to be, to be starting to do that more yeah. with this join HD. Well, I think that what's important is there are other local studies that are happening in, in juvenile onset HD, but this is trying to get the global perspective and yeah. we are asking for different information that's what, than what's being asked. So if you are currently yeah. participating in some local studies, and by local, I mean country specific studies mm -hmm. uh, about JOHD, one, you can always do multiple of those, but two, um, I, it's important to also do join HD because we're asking different information, we're capturing different information, and we have different goals. So um, please consider that. And if you have any questions, let us know. And we just welcomed Casey, who's our new join HD coordinator to the team. Mm -hmm. um, and we have world-renowned scientists. All of the specialists in JOHD are part of our scientific oversight committee um, in mm -hmm. order to make this thing happen. So it's, it, there's a lot of investment for the scientific community in this program. That's the stuff that's happening now. Um, one of the things that we're in the process of formulating is this program that's called HDYO Strive. It stands for Supporting and Training International Voices to Excel. This is an online platform that will be a membership platform where people who are professionals who support young people impacted by Huntington's disease can log in in order to do a few different things. We'll have a directory of those members. So there could be some global collaborations. People will have, there'll be experts on different topics that people can directly chat with on the platform. We can share resources and tools through our document library. We can host educational seminars. Um, we can have um, uh, support networks, all of these different things for professionals. Um, there is such a need for global collaboration when it comes to sharing information and experiences. And there are also different countries where you may not have a specialist who understands the journey of, of a young person in Huntington's disease. So this platform is going to be incredibly important to encourage people to learn more as professionals about a young person's experience and hopefully develop their own local programs to, to support young people. And as HDYO is this umbrella of understanding the young person's journey, we want to be able to encourage this collaboration and further education. Hey, I'm done talking, Matt. Camps are back next year for North no, America. Not. Hit it. Yeah, HDO camps. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, we're really excited to kind of talk about this one. Uh, so if uh, some of you who've been around for a little longer than others might know that we used to do HDO camps uh, usually every year. Um, some in North America, some in Europe. We've done some in Australia, New Zealand as well. Um, and the last one we did was in 2019 in North America. Um, and then we were planning before COVID to, to do Congress in 2020 and focus on the young adult community and then come back to camps after that and, uh, and carry on. But obviously Congress messed up everything there. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Not Congress. Congress. Didn't mess it up pandemic. <laughs> oh, definitely not Congress. Definitely that that major pandemic. But uh, okay, uh, yeah. So coronavirus came along and, and messed everything up, and and uh, we had to yeah you know, put everything back on the pedestal, blow it down a bit. But so uh, we've now delighted to kind of, after we've done Congress uh, in March this year, we're delighted to kind of focus back on camp now, and we are going to be doing uh, a camp in North America next August, um, which we're really, really thrilled about. And we're going, we're aiming to go back to where we started doing camps, which was in Camp St. Charles uh, in Maryland. They have AC. Yeah, they've improved their facilities as well, but it's a really cool place. And um, I mean, so if you're not familiar with what camp is all about, then it, it's, it's, a like four, about three, four, five day event um, where young people from, in this case, across North America uh, will come 
will be able to apply uh, to attend and it's free to attend. Uh, so you don't have to worry about travel costs and things like that. Um, they're all covered for you. And it's for ages like, usually it's about 18 to 23, 18 to 25 type age range. Um, and then when once you're at camp, um, it's a wonderful experience for young people to get to, to just to meet each other, get that peer support, but also then you get put in camp groups for the whole time and, and you have a camp leader in that group and camp staff team who will help you there and you get that time with the you get to um, do sessions with those groups and um, share your experiences different things for the pro potentially the first time you get to share that you know so it's really a wonderful wonderful time and also just have a lot of fun um, as well and just relax a bit and um, have some fun at the activities at, at the camp and just uh, relax a bit but also you know it's what we the feedback we get on camps is that it's it's quite an eye-opening experience um, for young people and most young people who attend of our camps have not really attended much before um, and it's it's quite the experience for them to go there and just have that time to just talk about how things are for them, you know? So highly recommend you, you keep an eye out for camp next year, North, North America. So Matt, who, I know you mentioned age groups and the geography, yeah. but who tends to participate in camp as an attendee? What's yeah, so kind again, of the priority of HDYO and our partners um, to make again, sure- just young that. people impacted by Huntington's disease so any again going through those you know could be at risk you could be just in a family you could be tested positive or negative already you know so it's there's a whole range of things you could be not at risk you could be just um like uh adopted into that family or something like that um uh you know even partners could come in that sense as well but so there's lots of um <laughs> people who can who can attend um and then it's just you know usually applications come in and we just try to do our best on on how many we, applications we have and how many spaces we have you know um is it usually people who are newer to the community or who haven't participated in events previously we usually try to accommodate those if we can for obvious reasons um if somebody's been to you know <coughs> hgsa events or something like this for example uh, for young people or they've been to something in Canada uh, for YPAD and things like this then they have a bit more experience um, versus you know a young app, another applicant who's not been to anything yet so so yeah we we do tend to to highlight those ones if if well it's also just on need um, and that's that's where we you know if you're thinking of applying do put as much information as you can down it's a good point because it helps us to kind of decide if you may go or not, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, feel free to ask questions to our team yeah. as you're looking at that. And we'll be releasing more information as we can. But again, these are things that um, we fundraise strongly for through sponsors and through individual donors and people who have their own fundraising um, for scholarship funds, because this is a, a program that we offer at no cost to the participants at all. So um, flights, food, accommodations, activities, those are all included with what HDYO provides. So um, yeah, it's a, a, I can't wait to experience my first camp because I, I came on in the middle of the pandemic. So I haven't had a chance to be at one. You're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> no, it's 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 an extraordinary experience. So yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to to getting back to it as well. So, yeah, yeah. Well, this is more questions. Yeah, exactly. And there's it's it's just so much fun to be able to support young people. And I know Matt, you've been doing this for decades upon decades. I'm not gonna say okay. how old you are now. Steady, steady. <laughs> Maybe just one decade, decade and a half maybe <laughs> but um we're it's such an honor to be able to support this 
this community of young people and families and people who support young people and clinicians and partners and pharmaceutical companies. And um, it takes a huge village in order to do what we do. And um, we're just so grateful for the community support and, um, and we're gonna continue to do what we do in order to best support young people across the globe impacted by HD. Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Well, as I've mentioned a couple of times in here, um, uh, there are so many ways for you all to get involved, whether it's participating as an ambassador, following along in social media, um, reaching out to us for support questions, whatever that looks like. We are always here to support you. If you're able and want to learn more about fundraising for HDYO and in order to support some of our programs, please also reach out to us. You can make a donation yourself. We have the ability for you to do your own fundraising initiatives. Um, but all of these fundraising efforts go to help support our programs, including those important scholarships um, and, um, and the different initiatives that we have in order to educate and empower and support the international community. But again, at the baseline, we're just here to be there if you want to talk. So don't ever hesitate to reach out to us um, if you need anything. Thank you so much, everybody. Awesome. We appreciate your support and we hope to keep it going. Absolutely. Take care. Have a great day.